Welcome to On the Agenda, the show that lets you know about the actions your city leaders are making. At their Monday, August 3rd meeting, city council members recognize Missouri City Green for volunteering their time to the city, award a design contract for the Glen Lakes Bridge replacement at Adams Street Reconstruction, and amended the city's TARP ordinance. Here's a full rundown of council's actions from their meeting. Representatives from Missouri City Green, the city's Keep Texas Beautiful affiliate, began the meeting by presenting a Golden Tree Award to the Wendy's at 5525 Highway 6 for outstanding landscaping. The company works to try to maintain responsibility for the environment. In addition, they, their corporate office is a lead office, which you're going to hear a little bit more about in the next award I give. But anyway, since they're not here, we'll make sure they get the award. And the streets up. Okay? Good. Yeah. The group also presented the 2015 Keep Texas Beautiful Business Slash Industry Award to Benny Keith. Benny Keith Foods was founded in 1906, and so we're a pretty old company. But Mr. Keith, uh, this is an award that he would be very, very proud of today. Uh, he has taught our company throughout the years, and we have continued that thought process that we need to always be great stewards of the resources that we've been given and to be great corporate citizens in all the communities that we're in. So on behalf of Benny Keith Company, Benny Keith Foods, the, our local branch here in Missouri City, uh, our general manager, Mike Needham, and our 325 employees, uh, I accept this award and we will uh, display it properly and do everything we can to continue to be a beautiful facility for this uh, community. Thank you. Awesome. City Forester Paul Wiersbicki next recognized Missouri City Green members for receiving second place in the Governor's Community Achievement Award for communities with a population of 65 to 90,000. Honestly, uh, the writing of the award was the easy part. The tough part was all that went into it. I wouldn't have much to write about without all the folks that are standing here today, and that's, that's the real magic of it. And it's pretty unbelievable to think that uh, this group alone and some of the other things that city staff are doing as far as environmental conservation in the city made a second place in the entire state of Texas as far as green initiatives, recycling, doing tree plantings, things of that nature. That's pretty good for a first year applicant. I believe we're the only ones that have gotten that high of a ranking in their first year to apply. So good things are coming. Mayor Alan Owen presented the group with a plaque thanking them for the contributions they have made to the city in 2014 and 2015. Mine is really a certificate of recognition for this group, Missouri City Green, and recognition for all that you've done in 2014 and 2015, uh, your contributions to increasing pride, responsibility, and beautifying the city of Missouri City, and responsible for those kinds of awards. And we've got some more coming in. Uh, we can't announce those yet, but I think you'll be proud of what work you've done on some other awards yet. Council removed the July 20, 2015 regular meeting minutes from the consent agenda and postponed the consideration of that item until the October 19, 2015 City Council meeting. Very good. All right, moving on to the consent agenda. I need to remove item 6A from the July 20, 15 minutes on the consent agenda and move that we set that out for consideration on the October, that's right, October 19th? 19th. Yeah, October 19th agenda is our motion. So moved. Councilman Wyden made the motion, is there a second? I second that one. Councilman Marulis made the second. So all we're really voting on is 6B. All those in favor? Motion carries. Council held a public hearing to receive comments for or against a request to rezone an approximately two acre tract of land from an LC3 retail district to an industrial district. The site is located southwest of the Beltway 8 and US 90A intersection. Council members Yolanda Ford and Chris Preston were the only dissenting voters. This is a request, as stated, uh, for two-acre tract that is uh, in the area of the Park 890 um, 
industrial business park and this is a request to rezone it from its current uh, LC32 I it's two acres um, it does not have frontage on highway 90 it is landlocked um, by the park 890 uh, development as well as a drainage system um, for the highway 90 corridor um, and so the developer is seeking to acquire this tract and to have it uh, used for site uh, development uh, for the park 890. the rest 90. of the track he already owns. Right. And it would uh, largely include um, pavement uh, to support the overall development. <coughs> and staff forwarded a positive recommendation. Planning and zoning also forwards a uh, positive recommendation. Council awarded a $317,715 design contract to R.G. Miller Engineering for the Adam Street reconstruction. The pavement management and maintenance uh, program has dictated that it's less than a 70, which is the criteria. It's been on the, uh, the plan uh, to go ahead and reconstruct Adam Street. And so this will take us to about 3,400 linear feet of two-lane road, um, 1,400 feet of asphalt, and we'll convert it all to concrete curb gutter. And uh, representatives from R.G. Miller was uh, shortlisted, and uh, they are here today. If you have any further questions with them, and um, we're excited to get this project started. Council also awarded a $471,565 design contract to GC Engineering to design the Glen Lakes Bridge reconstruction. Council questioned the Public Works Department about Quell Valley Fund's involvement in the reconstruction of the bridge as they have funded additional renovations to the El Dorado Bridge when the city reconstructed it in the past. Staff went through a selection process. We had several uh, good qualified firms and uh, we've decided to recommend GC Engineering and a representative from uh, their firm is here as well if you have any further questions about that. But uh, again. Now, Scott, of course, obviously this bridge along with the other bridge were in the county's bond issue for a uh, million dollars a piece. And it is, isn't Quail Valley fund going to do the same thing with this yeah. bridge that they did with El Dorado. That, yeah, yeah. Um, yes, uh, Charlie's actually kind of started talking about that uh, brooch and so it kind of looks similar to what you're talking about on El Dorado. Well, the reason I bring that up is that there was some comments made earlier about from other areas of the city that their bridges didn't look that good. I just want it known that Quail Valley's HOA Yes, sir. Is paying Different. just like they did for the improvements on El Dorado. They're going to pay for those improvements. The city's not paying for those planters and those fancy lights that's being done by the HOA. That is correct. If they wish to participate to do that similar, we are more than welcome to have them happy participate. happy for anybody else to do that. Absolutely. <laughs> that is yeah. correct. And that's a great, I mean, what they did on El Dorado is talked about all the time anyway. And. So I assume you've got uh, a process set up with Charlie or whoever he has out of the fund board to go through the specifications as sure. To I'm, I'm what assuming it's going to be much like we did on El Dorado, where we would get a base uh, bridge um, package together, and then based upon that base bid practice, we'll bring it to the fund and ask what they would like to add and what funding they would like to add uh, to it, and then come up with aesthetic improvements that would match their funding. When's our start date, and how long will the bridge be out? Well, that's going to come down to funding, of course, as always. Um, as design. with Fort Bend County, part of their funding will come for design. So we'll be designing this year, and then we'll be looking at construction when bond funds are available in the following year. In 2016? Yes, sir. And what's our, what do we estimate our construction time to be so the citizens in um, along there know? Uh, I would estimate you're looking at because you'll need a, a pretty much complete bridge removal mm -hmm. and replacement you're probably looking at around a six month yeah. uh, construction contract on that. Council next accepted the conveyance of certain wastewater facilities to Missouri City by Fort Bend County Utility Districts number 115 and 129. Mayor and Council this is a continuation of our original steep bank flat bank agreements uh, currently the city has two regional lift stations Colonial Lakes uh, and also the one located at Oilfield Road, Thompson Ferry. Those are two of the six lift stations that feed into the Steep Bank Flat Bank Wastewater Treatment Plant. Part of the agreements associated with that is that we would slowly be taken over and have last points of entry. Uh, so once we did the agreements uh, back in January of this year when we were doing some true ups and settle ups with 
the MUDs and participation part of that was to finalize these. And so this is the first one. This MUD 115 has one lift station that is the final point of entry into the, into the city steep bank plant, plant. And so this is that conveyance of turning over the lift station and the force main and easements associated with that. Council awarded a contract to Freeze and Nichols to provide engineering design and construction administrative services for the Bayou Wastewater Treatment Plant lift station. This plant's been in service uh, since the 80s, basically. Uh, this lift station has never been addressed. We <laughs> have uh, aggregate uh, being exposed. This is the primary lift station on site. So all force mains from the distribution system come to this site and come to this lift station. From there, uh, waste is then trans I think where that is. is pumped and pumped up to the wastewater treatment plants. And I will give you a little example. Um, and so it is located on site. Um, I got it out for reference so you can kind of see where it's located overall. So we have three plants there, totaling one point, almost one million gallons of uh, treatment capabilities. And so this lift station supplies that from the entire site. So uh, we went out for bid, or I should say for request for uh, SOQs. Uh, we had 17 firms submit in and evaluated them all. And uh, we selected Freeze and Nichols to do this facility for us. And we're also looking at some improvements to be able to handle what we call ragging as well, which is to uh, put some screens up front so we don't plug our uh, treatment plants and continually having to clean out the lift stations. So this would come in, rehabilitate, put an epoxy coating on the side, and try to re rejuvenate this lift station so we don't have to do a full replacement. For their final authorization, Council awarded a contract to Cobb, Fenley, and Associates to provide an inventory and analysis of all off-channel crossing and bridges citywide. What we're doing here is we're expanding our asset management basically of all of our channel crossings. So we are going to be uh, doing a, a condition assessment of those channel crossings that are not on the off-system tech stop program this time around. So this, this program will represent those smaller channels that are less than 20 foot in length and we will be uh, doing a condition assessment for those. So we, we went out for our SQs and we had several respond. We did interviews and we had uh, very good uh, uh, presentations. We chose Cobb Finley and they are represented here tonight. So we are requesting to go forward with this project. On the first of three readings, council considered two ordinances granting Waste Corporation of Texas LP the right, privilege, and franchise to use the public right-of-ways to conduct solid waste collection for both residential and commercial customers in Missouri City. January 1, 2016 through December of 2022, there will be a 5% fee of gross, received, uh, gross receipts received by the company, and that is the franchise fee. Uh, what that provides for is the, the ability for them to use our rights-of-way and, and pay to, to use them. Uh, they also have, we have a provision in there, which is a charter-driven provision, <coughs> that uh, provides us the right to purchase uh, their equipment uh, during the first five years of the uh, franchise. Uh, that's, again, not anything that we probably exercise, but yeah. our charter calls for it. Uh, I don't think we, so. <laughs> we do have uh, standards, service standards in the uh, franchise that reflect what was in the uh, agreement that you adopted uh, or will be adopting with the uh, contract's terms and the uh, their, their liquidated damages that go along with those uh, service standards. This, in the case of the uh, commercial, it is, the commercial franchise, it is an exclusive uh, agreement. In the case of the residential, it's not exclusive. We will have one other uh, entity that will be operating, or company that will be operating in Missouri City. That will be VF Waste. They only have about 280 customers total. There are some townhomes. I spoke to them today, and uh, they requested to move forward with continuing because their customers uh, continue to have the price to beat. So we will have another one. So where are those? This is uh, Quail Valley, Quail Villages 1 and 2, okay. and Bermuda Dunes townhomes. So again, there's only about 285 total uh, that are on that contract. Those are private streets anyway. We so, don't care if they tear them up anyway. They'll be paying. They'll be paying as well, though. Exactly. So we'll bring that to your uh, attention and, and to the council meeting, the next meeting. And then uh, we will have uh, both the uh, residential, which is 10A, and the commercial, which is 10B, and they cover the same things, only difference being exclusive and non-exclusive. Council approved on the first and final reading an ordinance to amend the general budget to transfer various appropriations among accounts. 
While this action had been formally done collectively twice during the fiscal year, staff is now making adjustments as they occur. Mayor, could I point out one thing we are doing a little differently is uh, we're making these uh, adjustments as they occur rather than waiting uh, once or twice a year semi-annually so this is in June if you want to go over what this is in reference to that's taking place yeah this particular one relates to the uh, lift station uh, projects rehabilitation projects that Robert just uh, uh, talked with you guys about this uh, steep bank flat bank and Mustang Bayou it actually moves the money uh, from the uh, operating fund to the utilities construction project fund, but the funds are already budgeted. And can you explain to the residents why that change is necessary? Well, that change is necessary simply due to uh, accounting practices. We prefer to uh, uh, expend capital related funds out of capital project funds as opposed to operating funds. Nothing out of the ordinary. Nothing out of the way. To do it all the what time. we do every yeah. year. Yes, sir. Okay. Stuff we use it when we need it. I think they need the it. The money is there. Yes. We just need it right now. Money yeah, and another fund. point to make this is, again, not the general fund. This is the utilities right. construction fund. Council passed an ordinance to amend regulations regarding vehicle tarps. This council changed the ordinance, so it's no longer required for residents to display their vehicle registration sticker and residents only have to make their license plates visible. A lot of citizens are having problems meeting the requirements, so we're asking that um, we revise the ordinance to make it uh, less restrictive to meet, to help the citizens meet the objective of that ordinance. And we had a uh, workshop before this meeting and totally agree. The only thing that I think that we want to come out of the change in the ordinance is that it does away with the requirement for the clear piece of plastic for the inspection sticker. All we're going to ask is that the license plate be visible. In other words, they can pull the cover up over the license plate, but the citizens need to understand why we're asking that the license plate be visible. There's stolen vehicles out there, and, and our police officers need to be able to verify that that vehicle in that driveway belongs there. So we're not asking the, the residents to go have anything specially made, you know, like we had before, or that they have the mirror pockets or the antenna pockets. As long as the cover is designed for that vehicle Avia. and fits that vehicle, and that that license plate, the rear license plate or front license plate is visible from the public. That's all we're asking that be enforced. And we're also asking that those people who have been cited before, if they have abided by what we're going to adopt in this new ordinance. In other words, if they weren't just throwing a tarp over it that they bought over Walmart, that doesn't comply. But if any of those people who have received warnings prior to that who comply with what we're making these changes tonight. In other words, that the cover does cover the car as it's designed to do, and that the license plate is visible, which are now need to know. We're gonna ask that those people take that case to the judge, and we're gonna ask that those cases be handled that way. And that should be easier for you all as well, yes. but it's easier for the citizens. It's, it, you know, we know that, that it's, it, it's hard on the citizens to go try to find, matter of fact, we all, I think, have researched it. I don't know that they even make them. That, and we don't need them anymore now that the license plate is the inspection and the Probably license good. plate. That's our main concern. We don't need that visible piece anymore. So if you all agree with that going forward, that's what we would adopt tonight. For a full list of council's decisions, click on the Council Connection link at the bottom of the MissouriCityTX.gov homepage. Keep watching Missouri City Television to learn more about Missouri City events and programs.